In this segment, I'm going to show you how to make these little uh, imaginary creatures legs. Now, this we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be actually turning these into dragons. So this is going to be a, an imaginary dragon leg. What I do is I take a quarter of a piece of newspaper. Actually, it's a, it's a half sheet of paper, and then I cut it in half. So just one half of the giant page of your newspaper, and then I cut it from top to bottom. I find the middle and just tear it in half. And then what I do is, so it's basically a quarter if you have the giant sheets. And then I fold this in half again. And then I fold it in half again. This is just to, to make it easier to roll up because I want to make this a tight, tight roll for this leg. And then I start just folding down and creasing. And then just continue rolling as tight as you can. Now the first fold I made is about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just rolling down tight and rolling this up. And then I'm going to take some pieces, small pieces of masking tape. And I'm going to just place them around here just to hold it for a second. Actually, you can even use real small pieces. Then I find the center just so it holds a little bit. Fold it in half. You can see how it's kind of coming out at the top. Fold it in half. Then I'm taking the top half and folding this down. This will form the upper thigh of the dragon leg or your imaginary creature. Because it could be, you might not want to make it a dragon. It could be a, a you know, just a creature that you've totally made up yourself. So there, this gives a little thicker thigh. Now keep this real tight. And if you twist it, sometimes twisting it makes it a little bit thinner too. But then secure it with a small piece of tape. It's better if you don't use gloves. I have gloves on because I have a class coming in next and I didn't want to have to rinse my hands. And sometimes the newspaper gets uh, my fingers all black. Okay, then fold. Now once it's all tight, fold down this and this form just a little bit. And that's about probably an inch down. And that's going to form the foot. Take your little piece. And it helps if you put a lot of these little pieces on your desk. I get my, my, um, my masking tape all ready. And the secret to this is keeping it very tightly wound and tightly wrapped. And then you might need another little piece here just to have it very tight. And then once you have it all Same secure, paper. okay, then you can, this becomes the foot, bend it up. This becomes your foot. And then you can bend this leg here. And then, see, it's, or it almost looks like a frog leg too. Now, once you add your, what we're going to do to this is we're going to be using plaster tape. So if you want your bends to stay, just secure them. Because I bent it once and it's not staying. So now I'm going to take my tape. Because we're going to be covering this with, now I want it to come down here and then I'll add detail after as I'm plastering it. We're going to end up covering this with plaster tape. There. You can use paper mache. I prefer the plaster tape. It dries, it dries much faster. Now I want this dragon leg to be bent like this. So I'm going to add some tape so it stays bent. There. Like that. And any areas, if you have areas that are lifting up like that, just secure it down with some tape. And I'll be showing you how to plaster it next. But there is the dragon leg. And then we're going to be attaching these legs. I have the two front legs and the two back. And then we'll be attaching these legs onto the dragon. Okay, the next part of our dragon is going to be the dragon head and part of his jaw. And what I did for the head is I took a quarter um, piece of newspaper, rolled it in a ball, 
And then I did the same for the upper jaw. And now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna make two of these so you'll be able to see how I made both of them. Um, but you take your quarter sheet of newspaper and when you open up the piece of newspaper, it is a very large piece. So I sliced it down the middle and then I folded top to bottom and then just tore it in half. So I have a square piece of newspaper. And I'm gonna form the lower jaw, which is gonna be almost the same as this upper jaw. And I'll show you how I did it. I basically kind of just fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then kind of squish it in the edges and then kind of roll it. Squish and roll, squish and roll. And you want this to be pretty tight. So it's elongated, so it's not a perfect ball shape. So pushing real tight. And then I can manipulate it and sculpt it with my tape. Just by pressing and pushing more. So it's basically, it's kind of hard to even describe it, kind of like a football-y shape here. Just real tight. Take your tape. And you can design your jaw any way that you like. Now, this is loose ends. So I pr push the tape and then I use pressure with my thumb and I'm bringing it back this way. Now you can see your fingers are gonna get pretty dirty with the, uh, the newspaper. Um, and you, I normally don't use gloves, but right now I'm at school and this is my lunch period, so I'm gonna go right to lunch. So I can just take these gloves off and I'm good to go. Sometimes this black stuff is, takes a little while to get off. Um, but for kids, I do not let them use the gloves. We don't use gloves for this. So I'm pressing tight and I'm basically just shaping this. Now I want this to be a little bit thinner and you can see you can manipulate the newspaper just by pushing really tight. And I'm take, so I'm gonna take this and sculpt it with your newspaper. And what we'll eventually do is we'll eventually be using the plaster tape to cover this with. So now I have um, an upper jaw, a lower jaw. Now, this is where you can adjust it, say for the side view of the dragon. So if you want to, the point to be squared off, look at this, they don't match, but sometimes in these creatures, they're not matching. I'm gonna keep mine squared off at the bottom. The jaw is squared at the bottom. And then the, the top is more pointed because I wanna get some detail of teeth in. And sometimes creatures shapes aren't, you know, the exact same where they come together, the way their bodies are made. And so I'm gonna keep it like this and then I'm now gonna attach everything together. I will just tape down the jaws here. And just so that it's, you know, secure because we're gonna be covering this with um, plaster tape. So just so long as it doesn't fall apart while you're making it. And then I'm gonna take the circle I've made. Kinda looks bird beakish. And this will be the beginnings of the head here. I want this to come up a little bit higher so that he has an actual uh, area, like the forehead area. And then I'll make the bottom jaw in here. But I've taken just balls of this newspaper this size. I work with this piece of paper for all of the facial feature parts and the legs, the legs that we've just made. So I take all, just a quarter piece of newspaper for every bit of this here. So then I'm gonna take another quarter piece of newspaper and form the bottom jaw. And this is how I did the circle. I just basically crumbled this up. I'm keeping a little bit of this out so that this can be the, um, this could be the final covering. So wrap it really, really tight and one little corner is sticking out and you're just gonna kind of roll it up, pushing your edges in, push your edges in, pushing, pushing. Use a lot of those muscles in your fingers and just roll it up so that this makes it nice and smooth around there so you don't have to tape as much. And then this is gonna form the bottom of this head area here. And then we're gonna tape this together. Now you can decide if you want it this higher, lower, you know, you can play with these shapes. And sometimes your dragon or your creature, whatever you're making, just kind of changes shape as you're making it. And you can just decide, assess as you go along. But that's gonna make a nice head shape 
And then this is the actual mouth area here for that dragon. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape that in and then I'll show you how to form the neck. Okay, what I did was I attached the round circle of sphere to the nose and mouthpiece and then I've also put a circle of uh, newspaper here and then attached it down with uh, masking tape and I'm doing the same on the other side. Now when I look at it from this direction they're not exactly lined up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just line it up a little bit better. So I'm placing more of this down and then I'm going to blend this in with the tape. And so basically what I'm doing now is I'm sculpting the head um, with newspaper to the way I like it. And if you look at some of the real, and this is a Komodo dragon, and if you look at some of these dragons here, you'll see that they have a buildup right in here, some neat, uh, kind of skin for the eyes, uh, uh, like a raised up relief around the eye and eyelid. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, put that in there. So I'm going to blend this up in here to give a little bit of sculptural detail with the, the newspaper. So if you wrap the newspaper tight, like this. I'm trying to make like an eyelid come out a little bit. And you can also form the this kind of detail and design if it gets real small. This I might even want to do with some of the plaster tape as I apply it. And then I'm just going to put my tape down on top to give it a little bit of a raised effect here. Oops, that's kind of a big piece of tape for that little area. And then I'll do the same on the other side. That's a little bit, I'm gonna put it up higher. I want it up a little bit higher, just to give a little bit of detail there. It's almost easier if you work real small with the newspaper, and then when you're plastering, you can just apply it right on top. And see, that's giving that neat raised up effect there, and then that's where the eye would be there. And so you just continue building up your details of your head. I also wanna give some nostril area here. So I'm gonna work up that area and then I'll show you what I've done after that. Now I'm gonna work on the dragon's neck and body. And I want this to be a very thin uh, dragon. I'm, he's not gonna be a very giant one cause he's gonna be a flying dragon. And I'll show you how I finished off the, the head. I just kept on putting on little bits of, of newspaper so that I could sculpt it, uh, sculpt some jaw area in here. And then I have this kind of crested area on top of his head. And then his eyes will sit in this area here. And I gave him a little bit of a shape to his uh, nose area. And I want the mouth open so that I can do some kind of fun teeth here. Um, so I kind of am happy with what this shape looks like. Now I want to make a very elongated thin neck and then I want to do a body and part of a tail. And I'm going to try and use this um, paper tube here. And it's just a paper towel tube. Now, this I just happened to have in the classroom. It was already painted green, but you, you, don't, you don't need it painted at all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some deep slits in here because I want this part to be very thin. And this part I want to be wider. And I'm doing it with the paper tube today just to make it easier for students. Um, Cause young students are um, the students that I'm gonna be doing this with. So I'm gonna be slicing, uh, just slicing several uh, slices around the tube so that I can then bring this down into a thinner neck. And I'm going probably half, almost halfway. And I'm doing my slices a little bit thinner than an inch. That way I can collapse this down into a narrow piece. Now I'm just gonna fold these back so I can stuff this. And I think the tube will give the kids a little bit more structure for the center part. And so I'm taking, again, I do quarter pieces of newspaper at a time, crumble them up tightly, and I'm just putting it in the tube. This is just to give the belly area of that 
um, dragon. And I'll put, um, I'll just crumble up two and stick it in. So that would be a half a sheet of paper if you're looking at the newspaper opened up. Now all of this I'm just going to kind of squish down and try and make it as tight as I can. You could even remove some of this. Let me remove, I don't want the neck to be real fat. So I'm going to remove a few pieces of this and I'm going to squish this down and because I want the belly and the back to go gradually down to a thinner area and then his neck and head come off of that. And then I'm going to tape my, stick my tape in around here. So I've kind of left just two little skinny pieces. And I'm wrapping it tight. And hopefully little children will be able to do this. This is going to be a camp idea this summer at the museum. And so I'm wrapping it tight. And when I teach at the camp, we have 12 kids in the classroom. And they're from 6 to 12, ages 6 to 12. So we're just wrapping this tight around here, just so that it goes thick to skinny. And then I'm going to do the same. Now I've kind of come out on this end, so I'm going to stuff it real good. And then I'm going to do this. Actually, I'm just going to press in this, kind of folding it in together. Because I want it to gradually come down into that tail. There. So you see how I'm kind of getting this nice shape. And then I will tape this off. This just gives it a little bit smoother effect. And then this area, if I bend this down, I'm going to pull off some of that. Now, I can determine how long I want my dragon neck to be. Okay? If you want it, you know, longer, of course, just attach it here. If you want it shorter, that's up to you. And I want mine to be kind of a long neck dragon. And so I'm going to attach it with the masking tape. And this is two inch wide masking tape and I really like using the two inch wide. You're not taking off the pieces every two seconds with the skinnier stuff. So I'm attaching it. It's nice and strong. There. And when I do paper mache I always use the masking and not the packing tape. The masking's a little bit better for paper, paper mache. Actually this is what I call paper mache but I'm plastering this. I also do another paper mache technique where I, um, there, that's nice, where I use um, tissue paper dipped in, dipped in a matte medium, which makes it a beautiful gloss. So what I do is once I'm done my structure and I have all the, the, the armature built, then I do tissue paper with matte medium right over this and it gives a nice glossy effect but my favorite is that plaster tape, which I'm going to be doing with this dragon. Okay, now I've got this done. Now I'm going to add some more st uh, structure to his neck because this is way too skinny and flimsy. So I'm going to just basically take my t tissue, uh, I mean p pieces of um, newspaper, wrap them, and then place them down and wrap them tight. Once I have it wrapped tight, then I will use a piece of tape and tape it off. And I'm gonna continue building up layers just like this. Here's a small piece of tape right here. You don't need a lot of tape at each layer. You only need more ta bigger tape toward the end. And so I'm gonna continue building up this these layers until I reach the top. And when I'm happy with the thickness, then I'm good to start working on my tail. And then I'll work up the tail. But this is, this is an easier way if you're using a tube. It limits the kid's size, and then it's easier for them when they stuff it. Okay, so I'm going to shut the video off, continue working, and then I'll show you what I've done, and we'll finish it off with a beautiful tail. And then we can attach our legs to the dragon. And then I'm going to use um, a pipe, not a pipe cleaner, <laughs> a coat hanger. And we're 
we're gonna use the coat hanger for the wings. So he has beautiful, really long wings because I envision this dragon to be a pretty good sized body with those and then just with giant gorgeous wings. Um, and then I'm gonna use some kind of really metallic -y fabric on the wings. Um, but let me go ahead and finish the body and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I've just finished attaching the neck, giving it a little bit of thickness. You can see how I've wrapped with a newspaper just by folding it in, in uh, thin strips and then continuing to wrap around the body and then attaching it. Now you'll see here how this has a little bit of an opening. We're gonna hide that when we attach our tail. And then I just made a very long, thin uh, piece of newspaper, wrapped it just like I did the legs, and then I tapered it. I went from a little bit wider to very narrow at the tip. And then I did this. This is pretty tightly wound. You don't want this to be loose and fluffy. And then I just put a little bit of tape on the end here where it all went together. Now I'm going to attach this to the body. And I'm going to overlap. Look, I'm not going to attach it like this. I'm going to overlap quite a bit so that that tail is secured on there. And so determine how long you want your tail to be when you're looking at your body. And then make sure it's centered. I'm just going to put this piece of tape actually underneath here. Then make sure this is centered on here, and I kind of like it like this. And then just simply wrap your, your masking tape around it. And if you do several layers of the masking tape around here, you'll be secure. And then look, it fills in the little holes on this side. And once you've done that, let me show you how to attach the legs. Now for the back leg, I'm going to attach the back leg like this. And position your legs the way you want them. And you can also adjust the lengths of these. If you don't like your, le your legs as long as this, you can make them shorter. So you, this kind of looks like a big giant lizard here. So you can adapt them and make them shorter if you need to. Um, I'm gonna kind of keep mine, I'm gonna make mine a little bit shorter. There, I'm gonna keep it, well, I'm gonna just attach it like this, I think, right to the body. And go ahead, apply quite a bit of, use a nice big piece of tape. And I'll just have this blend into the, yeah, right in here. I'm going to have the leg go bend back like that. And I'm going to attach it to the body. And then, let's see. I'm just going to attach it. I want it to be able to bend. And then sometimes you have to just move it around there. And then I'm going to make my knee here. Because I want it to be bent back. All right, I'm going to attach them and then I'll show you what it looks like once they're all attached. Okay, um, what I did was I looked up on the internet to see flying dragons. And that really helps with the positioning of the legs. And I positioned the front legs to come off from the shoulder. So determine your shoulder point. And the top of the front legs comes from their shoulders, just like your arms would. And it's going to form the letter L. So down and over. And then the hands kind of just hang down. Now, with the hands, you can add claws and things later. But at this stage, we're not adding any detail, any of the fine, finer details. This is just the, the structure um, before we actually add plaster tape to this. And the back legs position like the backwards letter L. And this is the thicker thigh down and over, and then the legs, the feet hang that way. And it's the same on the other side. So when you turn them over, you've got, now it's reversed, the backwards letter L and then like a letter L. And see these? These are more angled. This is more straight coming off the body. And this is more angled backs as he's flying toward the tail. But those are nice positions. But if you look up on the internet, you'll see some nice, nice leg positions and get ideas on how to shape and form this. Now, all, like I said, all of the other detail, any kind of 
horns or spikes or appendages that's going to come off this dragon. Maybe some kind of cool crests and things coming up around or crowns. That all can be done later uh, with the finer detail work. But for now, this is just the basic underlying structure of him. Now, now mine is, just to give you an idea of how long he is, this is 20 inches long right here. And now with the kids, when I do this with the kids, um, cause I'm teaching uh, six to 12 year olds, I'm going to have them plaster this first. If you're doing this at home or are an adult, you can probably at this time attach your wings. Um, but I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. This is, a, this is a, a coat hanger that comes from the dry cleaners. And it's just one of those metal coat hangers and then there was a, a pole coming right over here made out of um, cardboard. I removed the cardboard, opened up the coat hanger, and then this can be attached at the shoulders. When you look on the internet, you'll see that their flying wings come right at the shoulders. So right in here, this would make it sturdy. Wrap it with a lot of masking tape right where this meets the arms. So that where the coat hanger meets the arm, the upper arms here. That's where your wings would come off of. And then of course you can bend this any way you want to once you attached it. Now. For adults, they can attach it now with the masking tape and then you plaster over this. If they're children working, and like I'm gonna do with the kids at the museum this summer, we're not gonna attach this yet. I'm gonna have them plaster the entire thing first, then the last few rows of plaster, layers of plaster, we will put this on. We'll um, plaster it right in there with the plaster tape. Do a few rows of plaster tape and that'll be secure enough for, uh, we'll wrap it right around the body several times with the plaster tape and then rub it in. That'll be the last thing we plaster because this is such a large piece and then we've got some sharp edges here on the ends. And so when you're working with kids, you want to be careful of this this pipe, these, um, uh, these, coat hangers here. You could also stick a um, some kind of a cotton ball on the end of this while they're working or a styrofoam ball you can poke in just in case. Um, but we have only 12 kids and we're working with a small group. Um, so that should be okay. And we'll help them with the backing with this attaching to it. But just to be safe, you know, if you're working with kids, you want to make sure you do that. But this is the, um, the dragon so far. And uh, if you look at some of the videos on how to plaster tape, you can see some of my videos. I will also make one on how I'm plaster taping this one as well. Uh, thank you for ch tuning in and checking out my videos. And if you like them, please subscribe. And that's basically how you make your armature for a dragon or an imaginary creature.